Yo, what's poppin' everybody? This is Saber Fire 4, and today I'm gonna be looking at the Jet Black Bolt Poltergeist Japanese set. Uh, just like the Matchless Fighter 1, this is more than likely gonna be bundled up um, with that set, and they're gonna combine to make the Chillin' Rain, our English set that we're gonna get. So I already scrolled around this set a little bit, didn't read the cards, but I know there's some cool stuff in here, so let's get into it. Uh, starting with Lediba and Ledian. Uh, 60 HP, nothing much, collect, draw a card. Uh, pretty nice artwork though, even though I'm not a big fan of bug Pokemon. In fact, I hate most of them. And Ledian, uh, 90 HP, you know, continuing the trend of stage 1s that uh, belong in the DP era. So 90 HP, this guy's dead no matter what. You can do quick draw, draw 2 cards, and you do 20 for 1. Not very impressive, I mean, man. They used to be, like, I'm pretty sure there's, like, um, Masquerade. I think it might be from the Supreme Victor set, Platinum set, or just one of those Diamond and Pearl sets that did more damage, had the same draw to cards attack, and it was just better. So, it's so depressing seeing stuff like this, but it is what it is. We just gotta accept it, I guess, until we can't take it no more. Regular Pokemon aren't going to be very good, or good at all. And then Air Slash, 100 for 3, and then you discard an energy from this Pokemon. Once again, stuff from three generations ago. This sort of uh, damage I'll put in effect. Just too weak. Okay, so these are the first filler cards. Then we got Celebi V and Celebi V Max. Something more significant, I suppose. Looks cool enough. And 190 HP, 1 Retreat, and got New Leaf Dance. Attach any number of Grass Energy from your hand to your Pokemon in any way you like. Okay, and then Slash Back, 60 for 2, and then switch this Pokemon with one of your Bench Pokemon. So, there is another Celebi V as well, just like, the, just like what they did with the Victini. I guess they're giving us the VMAX, giving us a new regular Celebi V. And you've got the option to use uh, the one from the first Sword and Shield set. And just like Victini, I feel like the Celebi, the original Celebi V, is just better. It actually has a useful attack. I mean, I guess with Slashback, you can do some hit and switch stuff, but there's better Pokemon to utilize for this sort of strategy, working with one energy and what have you. I mean, Crobat VMAX, when it comes to the big guys, is probably the best in that regard. Uh, it's going to do 70 for 2, it's going to inflict poison, plus it's a VMAX, plus you put it under, um, well you put it on Crobat V, which is a good Pokemon on its own right. So yeah, but the New Leaf Dance, I mean, I guess it's a way to mass uh, energy acceleration on your grass Pokemon, like the old uh, Dragonair, if you guys remember from Sun and Moon. So, I mean, who knows, this might be something, but we have other options for Grass Energy Acceleration too, so... Oh well, whatever, we're getting this. Now, what about the VMAX? It has 310 HP, also looks pretty cool, just looking at us from this sort of angle. And Healing Forest, once turning your turn, once per turn, you may heal 20 damage from each of your Grass Pokemon in play. Now, that's pretty damn good. Now, Grass Pokemon always sort of have this eternal problem of uh, no matter how good they can be, Fire checks them because it's easy to use, it's popular, and you know usually their tactics with tanking and healing, they can't work if your opponent gets one hit Nagats. But, pretty soon, I mean, well, the Welder Engine is going to rotate, a lot of the best Fire cards are going to rotate out. I guess Victini can still be a thing that's going to destroy these Pokemon. But I guess it's probably going to be your best chance to make use of cards like these. I mean, heal 20 damage from all of your grass Pokemon. That's just broken stuff right there. Um, the Vileplume GX that came out in, I think, maybe Unified Minds or whatever the set was, did not see any play on its own as a conventional deck. Only used in like the Mewtwo Mew GX decks as a way to do 180 for just two. But... This is a similar thing in that is mass healing. It's going to be on all of your grass Pokemon. And this guy is a stage 1 essentially. So it's going to be easier to bring out. And max plant, 
You do 130 for two, search your deck for up to two Pokemon, reveal them, and put them into your hand. So kind of like, a, um, what is it called? The um, Togekiss attack, but not really. You do damage, and then you're going to search two Pokemon instead of uh, any card. I mean, if you're already, if you're attacking with this guy, if you got this guy out, then you don't really need to be searching Pokemon. So, I don't know. It would have been better if it was just search one trainer or something. But anyway, I guess you can help set up even more. But definitely the Healing Forest ability is very, very good. And it doesn't say it has to be active in this translation. So you have a bunch of these on your bench, you get that healing. So I feel like this is a good card when it comes to grass Pokemon anyway. And I guess the max plan attack is just there. Moving on, I don't want to waste too much time. We have C dot. So I guess there's going to be Shift Tree and Nuzleaf too, but they're probably going to be dark. And Astonish, random card. Puts in the deck. 50 HP, pretty low. And then we got Rapid Strike, Rengiki, Grookey, and Rillaboom. Interesting, interesting. So more of the starters in the uh, Ichigiki and Rengiki archetypes. You don't do much. And Thwaki. Knock off, discard a random card from your opponent's hand. And then Rillaboom with 180 HP. You got Wood Drain. Heal 30 damage from this Pokemon and you do 60 for 2. Ah, it's it's not going to do anything on the big guys as usual. And Searching Beat. You may discard any number of energy cards attached to your Pokemon in play. If you do, this attack does 30 more damage for each card discarded in this way. So, I mean, I don't necessarily know how this is going to pair up with the other Rapid Strike uh, cards in the theme. But I guess if you discard a lot of energies, you can do something. But I mean, any number of energy cards. Okay, so it, it starts at 120 for 3. So if you discard 3 energies, which is a lot. Like, like let's say you discard all of the energies on this guy. You're just going to be doing 90 more damage. So that's, what, 210? And then you had to discard everything. That's not that good enough. I mean, he just barely is in that range to get one-hit knockouts on these. As a grass dude, Zacian is going to resist him too. And other metal Pokemon. I mean, it needed to do more, dip, more base damage, if you ask me. I mean, it's a freaking stage two, for crying out loud. You don't do enough damage. And, I mean, in the Rapid Strike, I don't know, like, uh, if this was like the Houndoom in uh, Single Strike, I guess you can use that guy to get some energies and then discard them. I feel like this guy should have been in that sort of archetype. Like, maybe they did gave Embor this sort of effect or something. Anyway, sort of attack. I'm not that impressed with it, to be honest, but I guess... Once I'm working on TCG Online, you have all the cards around. And then you can think of stuff, see all the interactions. Then maybe we can do something. But to be honest, I'm not impressed. Uh, we'll see what happens in this set. But the support in the Matchless Fighter set was much better when it comes to the Rapid Strike stuff. Uh, there was a lot of good cards. I don't know if they're going to top it here. We got Psyduck. Let's spray. Man, this sort of beach reminds me of that beach in the Mystery Dungeon games, like the second ones uh, of Time and Darkness. The DS ones, they were so great. Yeah. And then we got Golduck right here. With Psybeam, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. And then Surf, more shitty stuff, filler stuff. And Sneasel and Weavil, also Rapid Strike. Cool, cool. Um, flip a coin, discard energy. And then you, you are a 110 HP stage 1, doesn't have free retreat, that's bad. And you got knockout tag, during your next turn if the defending Pokemon is damaged by an attack from a rapid strike Pokemon, it will be knocked out. During your next turn. So you do this and then you got attack on the next turn. I mean, it's not the most efficient thing in the world, but I suppose it's something. And the nasty plot, search your deck for up to two cards, put them into your hand. 
I wish it did damage too, like it did at least 10 or something. Then we could have just synergized with its own attack. Um, another Pokemon that I don't feel really adds much. I mean, we've got freaking Octillery, man. They're not going to top that supporter. So, why would I evolve into the Weavile to do nasty plot to search cards? I mean, you're going to use it for the knockout tag, but... I mean, there's effective ways to do damage with Rapid Strike Pokemon as it is. I don't, you don't need to rely on this. Your opponent can easily play around it. It's a stage one. There's a lot of competition. I mean, stick to artillery. That's, that's all I have to say. Um, it's too bad, but that's the case. And then we got Cast Form, Rainy Form. I mean, now that I think about it, it's been a very long time since we got like the Cast Forms... And they have the forms. I mean, I don't remember. Might have been like DP last time we saw shit like that. Uh, yeah. And it was just named Cast Form. Okay, so forecast. If you have eight or more stadium cards in your disc pile, ignore all energy in this Pokemon's attack costs. So I guess it's going to be like the Rotom stuff, like the Rotomotor deck. Man, <laughs> everybody forgot about it. But it seems like that. You got Rain Shower. This attack does 20 damage for each of your opponent's Pokemon. So yeah, I guess it's going to work like the... Well, not like the Wash, um, the Frost Rotom. Because that had to do with energies. But I guess it's something. If these guys, they're going to be of different types. I guess you can hear for weakness and stuff. But I mean, Stadiums, it's going to be rough to fill the, the discard pile with Stadiums. It's not like the tools... Uh, I guess you can still use uh, the Battle Compressor, which should have been banned or er errated. Let's just say that. Oh, God. Okay, whatever. Let's move on. Love Disc. Synchro Draw. Shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw cards from your deck until you have the same number of cards when your hand is your opponent. Now, you know what? I'm pretty sure there's a Gen 3 Love Disc. Um that had a very similar effect like this and you guys are gonna be wow how can you even remember a shit like that from fucking love disc yeah yeah I do because I buy gen 3 cards all the time I mean I almost have everything I need in my collection so I'm gonna quit but yeah I'm pretty sure there's another one that had a very I mean the same attack as synchro draw and back then it wouldn't be it wouldn't have been that bad but now using an attack to draw it's just not very effective. I mean, you might as well use the Snorlax and you don't need to waste that energy. Um, and it relies on how your opponent, the cards they have. Okay. We got Timpole and we got Tapu Fini Rengiki too. That's interesting. So this guy doesn't do anything. Uh, Tapu Fini. So, Rapid Strike, 120 HP, you got Smash Turn, switch this Pokemon, one of your bench Pokemon, 30 for 1. Uh, so, kind of like the Urshifu before it evolves. And then Ocean Loop, put an energy attached to this Pokemon into your hand. Now, I guess it will be compatible with the Rapid Strike energy. Oh, but you need to, no, it needs two water energy, so yeah. Uh, there's no chance I'm going to run water energies in the Urshifu deck. So I guess this won't belong over there. I mean, if it did, it would have been a nice water tick. I guess you can do 240 with the weakness. But uh, because it needs two water, that plant sort of gets ruined. Unless you're going to run, I don't know, like special energies. Like Aurora energy in that deck. But anyway... Uh, not too thrilled with this guy either. That's too bad because I like Tapu Fini. Damn. Looks like they put all of the good shit in the Matchless Fighter set. And then we got Activish V. Um, these are the shittiest fossil Pokemon from this generation. And this guy is going to be a V, I guess. We got Primordial Freeze. If the defending Pokemon is a Pokemon V or Pokemon GX, it can attack during your opponent's next turn. Uh, good effect, I guess, for as long as we're going to have these around. It needs three energies to work, but it's this sort of uh, Cobalion attack that's just going to work with Vs and GXs. 
Um, I guess you can use it in a water energy acceleration deck, but would you rather just do this and hope your opponent can't attack, or would you rather do high damage and get a one-hit KO? This kind of fixes this, though, because it can also do Giga Impact 224, and this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. So, I hate to say it, because it's, it's a shitty design Pokemon. I don't like this sort of uh, fossil. Damn. Motherfucker yelling outside, selling fruits and shit. Anyway, uh, I don't know if you guys can hear him. But, yeah, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I don't like its design, but it has what you need in a successful water Pokemon, I guess. 220 for 4, good range, get one hit guts, and you've got the Primordial Freeze as backup as well. So, if you attach like a tool that increases damage, like a Muscle Band too. Then all of a sudden you can do 100 for 3, then you do 240 for 4, and you can even 2-shot VMAXs. So, I think it's good. It's definitely a good Pokemon. Uh, it might even be grounds to drop, like Lapras completely, and focus on this guy in Expanded. Okay, so we get one good V, even if it's this stupid looking fossil Pokemon that doesn't make sense to me. Anyway... You got the Ampharos family, you got Marip, uh, okay, we got Fluffy, Electro Ball, looks pretty happy here, chilling in the forest, and then you got Ampharos, which does Thundershock 50 and then Paralysis, I guess, if you get heads, and then search, Searchlight Tail. Your opponent reveals the opponent reveals their hand. If there's any energy in there, it's gonna do 90 more damage. Well, at least it works for two energy as opposed to three. So I guess if they have an energy, any energy, 180 for two. Once again, it's not the greatest thing in the world on stage twos, and I just stand by my opinion. These guys need to have a lot more stronger attacks, a lot more broken attacks and much higher HP, like in the 200 range, basically. That should be the normality, like the Vs. I mean, if they're going to give us this basic-ass Vs with 220 HP. But what can you do? Is as good as it's going to get, to be honest. Uh, they're going to give us. So, yeah, they need to have an energy, though. It won't be consistent. We got more Rapid Strike Pokemon, still nothing on the uh, single strikes. So Thunder Arrow, this Blitzel does. And then Zip Striker, doesn't have a draw ability, <laughs> okay. Uh, Link Bold, if any of your other Rapid Strike Pokemon used an attack during your previous turn, this attack does 90 more damage. Okay, so this is like a revenge guy. But you don't necessarily have to die, you just had to attack with another Rapid Strike Pokemon. So this guy can effectively do 120 for 1. So as a lightning guy, you can use this for type coverage, I suppose. You could try. I mean, The thing is with these, uh, you're not going to have space in these decks for 50 billion stage 1 lines. If you're going to run Octillery, and then you're going to run something like the Urshifu, you're pretty much set with those guys. Like You're, not, you're probably not going to add any more stage 1s. Otherwise, your deck is going to brick even more. So, even if this guy's decent, yeah, you, just, you can't run him like in the regular Rapid Strike deck. I don't know. Uh, the way I use mine, at least. And then Spark Rush, looks like it's a coin flip attack. Uh, flip a coin to your tails, 90 damage for each heads. Okay. And then we got a Molga 2. A Molga. Looks very cute right here. I mean, where exactly is it? What is it doing? Looks like it's behind some shit, but I can't understand what it is. Damn. Um, but anyway, it doesn't do anything, it looks like. Just uh, flip a coin if it's paralysis. Has free retreat at least. And then we got Zera Aura V2, I guess to replace the GX that rotated. And it only has one attack. That's pretty bad. What does it do, though? Cross Fist. 
If any of your other... Oh, it's a Rapid Strike Pokemon. Damn. No, I just noticed that. So if any of your other Rapid Strike Pokemon used an attack during your last turn, this attack also does 160 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Fucking hell. So, wow. I mean, Mew is going to completely negate this effect. I wish it did like 160 on the active and maybe 100 on the bench. So you're just safer than, like that. But, I mean, if your opponent can't block the bench damage, it's essentially 260 damage for 3. So that's a lot of damage. And I guess it sort of uh, co-works with that um, Zip Striker there. Both of them lightning Pokemon. Both of them sort of do this shit where if the other dude attacked uh, and you attack, you do the bonus damage. Okay. So I guess maybe not paired up with Urshifu or whatever, but some different ideas and different strategies you can try for other Rapid Strike decks, I guess, completely different. So I suppose that's good. It's what I wanted in the first place. So more options, more variety. Because the thing is with Team Plasma, I mean, there were a bunch of different Team Plasma decks you could try, but I mean, at the end of the day, they run 99% of the same cards, and I mean, in the end, they just revolved around uh, Lugia, in the end. Lugia, and Thunderous, and Deoxys, you know, those Pokemon. Okay, so I guess maybe we'll be seeing Zero Aura V decks. Rangiki decks. Okay, moving on. We got Ghastly and other Gengar cards. Sleep, Pulse. Heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is not asleep. Then you get the Haunter. Will a Wisp, just 30. And then another Gengar. We actually have a few right now in standard. And they're not really doing that much. Uh, well, there's the Sword and Shield one that is actually not bad. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the deck. I meant to show it a lot earlier, but I guess doing the set review now. Uh, when this Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, search your deck for any two cards and put them into your hand. So it needs to die, and you're going to grab two cards. Not necessarily that good for its own deck. And then Pain Burst, 40 damage for each damage counter your opponent's active Pokemon. So, use it with... The Zigzagoons, Galarian Zigzagoons, but might as well just use Sableye, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, the damage, I guess it's going to be pretty strong. But I believe... I mean, yeah, fucking Sableye is even stronger if I think about it. I think it's like 60 damage, something like that. So, yeah, very, very unfortunate. And it's got to be the active Pokemon. Yeah, just pretty disappointing. What the hell? What the hell, man? Okay, we got Sableye. Go and collect. Search your deck for a training card. Put it into your hand. And then corner. Can't retreat. Okay. We have a regular Cresselia with Crescent Glow. Search your deck for a Psychic Energy and attach it to one of your Pokemon. If it's your first turn, go in second, attach up to three. Fuck me, just what I needed. Okay, so this is essentially the Volcanion 2.0, version 2.0, for Psychic Pokemon. Has the same HP, better retreat, the useful resistance to fighting, and Photon Laser, if you have uh, five or more Psychic Energies in play. This attack does 90 more damage. Okay, so this is much weaker than that guy's attack. You're going to need um, like 5 or more Psychic Energies to do 120. Uh, Volcanion, you just needed 4 and it did like 110. And if you didn't get the bonus, it did 50 for 2. So he has a better second attack. But Cresselia has better stats. And the Psychic Crescent Glow attack is essentially the same as that guy for fire. So this is the main thing we really want. I wish it also had a better attack, because Volcanion's attack that did 1 for 10 it did come up a lot. Uh, from my experience using it, it did come up a lot. 
And with the weakness, it could KO Zacian too. You know, you could do a lot of shit. One ten for two is respectable enough on a regular basic. This, I mean, you're going to need a lot more psychic energies. But because we get this Cresselia with Crescent Glow, it's going to be something, I guess, to try and power up a psychic Pokemon like Necrozma V and the other dudes. Give us something. I wonder like, if there's going to be like a welder for psychic cards too here. I suppose we'll see. We got Gullet and Gullark. Not doing much here. It looks like he's carrying some stones and shit. They look like the heart stones that you attach, like the item. And Golurk, a big 150 HP for a stage 1. I mean, it's... This is the ridiculous shit. Like, this guy has almost as much as HP as the stage 2s. So you think about that shit and you're thinking, like, what the fuck? I mean, I know that that's how it is. Like, some stage 1s, they've got crazy high HP, like Steelix and Wayload and shit. But... They just need they need to do better with the stage twos and stage ones. So strengthening punch. If this Pokemon has a Pokemon tool attached, it's gonna do 90 more damage. So essentially 150 for three. Eh, whatevs. And then Megadon Fall 190 for four, and this Pokemon does 30 damage to itself. Not impressive at all. It's probably gonna be another go look. That ain't really gonna do shit. I mean, I guess this is a stage one. You know, if you can hit something that's psychic weak, you know, with 190, you're doing a 380, you're always going to kill them. But they just need, they need less mitigation like this. Like, why couldn't it do just straight up 200 damage for three or something like that, which once again isn't that good anyway. <laughs> It does 190 for 4, and then you gotta do self damage, sort of uh, negating your decent HP, which isn't even that decent, because th these guys, they're just not gonna tank a hit. They won't. You know? Uh, they're gonna be dying in one shot. Like, Arceus kills this guy with his energy acceleration attack without even the bonus of being doing 180. You know, Zacian kills him, Eternatus kills him. The Welder Pokemon are going to kill him. So the meta of the V Pokemon always kill these Stage 1s and Stage 2s in one shot. Which they need to survive in order for you to be able to actually do something. Like, there's no point bringing a Stage 2 Pokemon out as your main attacker if it's going to be dying in one shot. Alright, now we got NK. Still Rengeki. There's no single strike yet. What the hell? Uh, spinning attack, and then Malamar, Rabbit Tentacles, uh, reveal any number of Rabbit Strike cards in your hand, it does 40 damage for each, reveal it that way, and then shuffle them into your deck. Uh, I guess another tactic you can try out, some sort of uh, synergy with Octillery, but since you can only get Octillery's effect once per turn, any sort of possible real deck with these two guys together goes out the window. I mean... If we could bring out like three or four um, artilleries and get multiple searches, like other stage ones in the past, then yeah. But since you can't, then it's not going to be good. Cutie Fly and Ripombi. Flap. That's it. Um, a pretty basic art. And Ripombi. This one's much better. I like this Pokemon. Uh, pretty, pretty cute Pokemon uh, for Bug type. You got Trick Step. You may move an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon to one of their benched Pokemon. Uh, it's not going to do anything. Uh, yeah, it's this sort of energy disruption, but uh, okay. And then you got Shadow Rider, Calyrex V. Wow, almost like some sort of Transformer shit, uh, but I guess, yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so these are the new Pokemon, like the DLC event, or not event legendaries, but legendaries, basically, you get from the DLC. And I did think the sort of Snow Dude was cool, but they did this sort of fusion shit, and it might even be more ridiculous and shittier than 
the case with the Kurams, like over design, not really cool at all. Um, seriously. So it's essentially, yeah, it's this horse legendary that's cool on its own. And then uh, the snow dude, I, I believe it, it's it Calyrex the name or it has a different name, I don't know. Just riding on top of it. Okay. So it, got, it has Shadow Mist during your opponent's next turn. Your opponent can't play any special energy or stadium cards from their hand. Looks like we're getting, we're getting some Dialga, uh, Dialga G shit here. So no special energies and stadium cards. That's a very strong effect for sure. And I guess it's going to be a counter for Arceus too. So for this reason alone, might see play and expand it. But then Eternatus is going to check it. Um, and then Astro Barrage. You select two of your opponent's Pokemon and put five damage counters on each of them. So it's going to be 104, five total damage that you get to spread on two Pokemon. And it's going to go through Mew, I guess. So that's good. Works with any energy. That's pretty good. Okay. Respectable. Uh, decent second attack, considering the first attack is very, very good. Um, seriously, it's it's good. And then it has a VMAX too, so you have an additional option. Uh, door to the Underworld. Once during your turn, you may attach a Psychic Energy from your hand to one of your bench Psychic Pokemon, then draw two cards. Are you fucking kidding me? Draw, attach an energy, and draw two cards. Fuck me! Fuck me! Um, alright, so, it ain't the welder shit, but, um, it's something. Uh, it's gonna be like energy acceleration once per turn, but you also get to draw two cards, so, actually, yeah, it is kinda like welder. Um, and you can do it once per turn, doesn't use your supporter. Pretty insane. It's gotta be the bench psychic Pokemon, thank god for that. But it's still busted as hell. Like seriously. I guess Psychic Pokemon are going to be getting some amazing support. And it's going to make that fucking Dragapult VMAX scarier now. And other Psychic Pokemon. Like I'm pretty sure like the All Creamy. Yeah that's Psychic now. Because we don't have Fairy Pokemon. He can appreciate that shit. I guess setting up. You can do a lot of shit. Um, Necrozma V is the Pokemon that I would like to use with this. Goddamn. And it's maxed Geist Attack. Does 30 damage for each Psychic Energy attached to your Pokemon in play. Of course, it was going to synergize like that on everybody. So what this means is with 3 on, just to do the attack, I think you're at 100. Um... Sounds about right. So 100 for 3, and then for each additional one on your bench dudes, it's going to get stronger. So, Eternatus VMAX and just Darkness Pokemon, they're kind of going to keep this card in check. Uh, but there's the Zapdos that's going to keep Eternatus now in check, like even more effectively. So I don't know if people are going to keep playing that guy. If they do, then he can counter this guy. But outside of that, this is an extremely broken Pokemon. Uh, the package of a broken ability and a solid attack. And uh, there's a lot of psychic Pokemon that are going to welcome this card with open arms because it can help them out. So, yeah. Uh, stats are typical for a VMAX. And, uh, I mean, I swear to God, like, the basic form is also pretty good. You got a good starting Pokemon, too. That's gonna fuck up a lot of decks, sort of, uh, lock Pokemon. So these guys are really good, for sure. We got Poppy Toad and Seismitoad fighting guys. And what do you do? Not much, as usual. And then you... Uh, 170 HP, it's got a shitty hyper voice attack, and then a wobble wave during your opponent's next turn if any Pokemon will require one more colorless energy, 
It has one more three cards, whatever. Uh, Crab Roller and Cramominable. Looks like there's a lot of them chilling here. And uh, the Stage 1, 150 HP. Double Lariat. Coin Flip Shake. And the Crab Hammer Shitty Attack, 130 for 4. Way to go. Keep printing this bullshit. And we got a Cloborus, Clobopus, Tongue Twister, fucked up names. I believe this is clay and just has beat. And then they grab lot. Stranglehold Master, when this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's active Pokemon retrieve cost becomes two more. Synchro Buster, if both of you and your opponent have the same number of cards in hand, uh, 160, whatever. Uh, looks like it's fucking ripping a tree with its tentacles. Coughing and wheezing. Smog and wheezing. Gas mix. Uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is not confused. Attach a darkness energy from your disc to this Pokemon. Should have been attached to another Pokemon, but I mean, it's a stage one anyway. And then a smog burst. This attack does 20 damage for each darkness energy attached to all of your Pokemon in play, but. I mean. Stage one, the damage isn't really. I mean, it's actually weaker than something like Greninja's Orc. Anyway. And then we got Galarian Weezing too. They give us the double package. Energy Factory. Any basic darkness energy attached to your Pokemon at play with Weezing provides two darkness energy instead. Okay, so this could have been something cool, but they decided to ruin it as usual. So. We've had Pokemon with abilities in the past, uh, Poke Powers, I guess, Poke Bodies, but we did have like the Venusaur recently from Shining Legends. I say recently, but that you attach an energy and it provides double the type. So if this worked with any, you know, darkness Pokemon, not just Weezing, then this would have been pretty good. I uh, like you're not gonna use the fucking Weezing, but you're just gonna use this guy with other Pokemon. But they decided to do this, it has to be wheezing. So this means you just got to use it for this wheezing ass deck. That's not going to be very good. I mean, you only have four coughing. And you can only bring out so many wheezings. So even if you get like one of this guy. Or maybe two out, just in case. And then you use the other regular wheezing I guess to attack you know double the darkness energies and attack shit it's not gonna be that good you're relying on stage once you're relying on a Pokemon or Pokemon that evolved from one Pokemon too I mean of course you can't apply more than one energy factory I, I knew this from the start sort of it's just they, they should have just made it work with any darkness Pokemon because then it could actually have some use anyway and then we got Nuzleaf and Shift Tree. Looking kind of cool. As usual, Nuzleaf. Does fake out. And then the Shift Tree. I guess I'm going to be disappointed as usual with this guy. Um, got Tengu away. If your opponent's active Pokemon has damaged counters, put it in all cards attached to it back in your opponent's hand. What? Um, okay, yeah, it's going to spin it in the hand. Uh, has damage counters, but you're not going to get a prize. And then Gale Fan, discard a card from your opponent's hand without looking. Too difficult to use, but I'm not surprised. Fucking hell! We get Metagross too in this bitch. And it's still Rankiki. I mean, is everybody going to be Rankiki in here? And I guess they're going to do another set for Single Strike? I mean, is that how it looks like to me? I mean, we've went, we're at 49 cards from the 70, and everybody has been Rankiki here. So this guy does Bullet Punch, uh, flip two coins, and this attack is 20 more damage for each heads. So I suppose it starts at 20. So if this is right, I guess you have the chance to do 40 or 60 for one. 
which is quite good. I mean, I wonder if there's anything wrong here. But either way, it's nice. And then Synchro Hammer. If this Pokemon and your opponent's active Pokemon have the same number of energies attached, it's going to do 150 damage essentially for two. Now, this attack isn't so great because, you know, it's unreliable. Uh, you're going to need to, your opponent to have two energies to do 150 for two, which isn't so hot anyway. And if they've got three, you got to attach another one. Then doing 150 for three is even worse. So this isn't a very good second attack. But you know what? I know we get a fucking VMAX here. So that's what's up. Is this going to be the replacement I use for Aegis VMAX? Because I fucking love Metagross. So it has 330 HP. So that is an improvement over Aegis Slash. Uh, the bottom stats are the same, I'm pretty sure. Magnetic adhe Adhesion. Search your deck for up to two cards and put them into your hand and shuffle your deck. I don't like this sort of attack because when I evolve into a Pokemon like this, I'm not going to be wasting turns to grab at cards. Okay? But anyway, it has it. Has a second attack too. Max Rush, during your next turn, this Pokemon's Max Rush does 150 more damage. Uh, you fucking ruined it for me. You have fucking ruined it. But I should have known. They always do this to fuck with me. They print a Pokemon that I like, and then they fuck up its attacks and shit. So, Metagross cards have this sort of effect in the past. It was the Metagross from Legends Awakened. Metagross EX, the original Metagross EX um, from Hidden Legends. But those were bad back then. So you know this one's going to be bad too. I mean, I guess this one is going to be able to take a hit. So... I mean, th those guys could uh, survive too, I guess, but if you do, like, if you think about it, 250 in two turns, you divide that by two, that's like 125, so around like 130 for two. So that's not impressive. It's not good enough. Oh, actually, no, it's um, 350, so that's like 170 for two. Okay, so that's a bit better. But it doesn't change the fact that Aegis slash VMAX attack is a million times better. It's more consistent. It's just going to get better as you get more prizes. And it's just a lot more reliable. Uh, Aegis slash V, the regular one, is also much more useful, I would say, than the regular Metagross here. I mean, it has a good early attack. I like the first attack. I like easy to use cheap attacks that can do damage like this one. But Synchro Hammer isn't good. And on Aegis Slash V, you get an attack that's going to ignore effects. So you can't fuck with that. And then this guy, I mean, he has two attacks. The Aegis Slash V Max only has one. But I really don't care about the add card attack. And I guess Max Rush, I mean, we might use it. It's gonna do like 250 so it's 350 yeah I mean I just wish it did something better like do 170 for two or something or I don't know uh, a bit unfortunate anyway uh, this is the package we're getting I guess he has 10 more HP too which can come up uh, it is Metagross though so I'm probably gonna try him out if anything, just to show it to you guys for the channel. Okay, we got Cabalion and we got Blissey V. Blissey, one of my favorites too here. Headbang. And then Metal Slash. 130 and you can retreat. This Pokemon can retreat. Not that impressed. Uh, okay, and then Blissey V. Is this going to be a Rengiki too? I guess I forgot to mention, this guy is a Rengiki, so, I mean, it's pretty weird, but he is. Like, I wonder how he can pair up with the other guys. I guess we can use Octillery with him, too. But, I mean, this Pokemon, you have to use it with something like Bronzong, 100%. So, are you going to run Octillery with that shit, too? Anyway, so let's look at Blissey. God damn, it's essentially a regular V Pokemon with 250 HP. I mean, we've got the Waylord too. 
from Champion's Path, but I mean, this, I have a feeling it's going to be good, actually. Natural Cure. When you attach an energy from your hand to this Pokemon, you heal all special conditions. It's whatever. And then Happy Blast. This attack does 30 more damage for each energy attached to this Pokemon. Then you may attach up to 3 energy cards from your Discord pot to this Pokemon. Are you fucking kidding me? So this attack is also a throwback to Blissey from Mysterious Treasures, a card that a card that was very solid for a period of time when you know Mysterious Treasures, you know the, the early DP sets were new. Uh, and I mean this this gets to attach three energy though. Blissey, you can only get like one. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong though. Wow. Uh, 10 damage, 30 more for each energy attached to this Pokemon. Fucking hell. I mean, you know what you're going to do with this guy. You're going to use it with Porygon Z. And then you're going to destroy stuff. But you, it is weak to fighting though. And that Zapdos is going to keep it in check. So, I mean, I'm definitely liking it though. It's just a simple basic that we can use with Porygon Z. So I'm looking forward to it. I think this might be my favorite V from the cards I've seen so far. I mean, how many energies do you need to do any real damage? Like, if you have three energies on, it's going to be 100 for three, and that's not good enough. Now, you get to attach three energies from your Disco Pulse to this Pokemon. So I guess if you have a bunch of special energies dumped there, um, you can do more shit, but I mean... <sighs> it's after you attack, not before you attack. And that's a bit unfortunate. I feel like it's not going to be an easy Pokemon to use. You're going to need like 10 energies to do any real damage. But there just has to be something we can cook up with this guy. And I mean, with the powerful colorless energy, you can use those to boost the attack as well. So... And you got four of those. Let's say you got two of those. So 40... 50, um, um, 60, that's 110, no, wait, that's 100, 140, at the very least, we can aim for two hit Nagas, perhaps, I mean, you gotta remember, it also has 250 HP, so, nothing is really gonna kill it in one shot, not even Zacian, if we put, like, the cape on it, too, so that's interesting, that's very interesting, we got a regular cast form here. It is yarn. It's nice. You got four cast, eight more stadiums, yeah. And then a weather force draw draw cards into have six cards in your hand. And also does eighty. So I guess it's gonna replenish your hand in the forecast deck. If you try it. We got uh, Kesleon or Kekleon. Uh palette swap. This Pokemon is the same type as all basic energy attached to it. If it has several basic energy types, it is each of these types to hit for weakness, I suppose. It's a Renkiki dude, though. Uh, it's got to be basic energies, though. But I guess you can... Yeah, you can not tech this in to hit for weakness. I mean, you attach a basic energy and then you put, like, the Rapid Strike. But not in Urshifu. Not in the Urshifu deck once again. And then we got a Talon Flame line that looks like they're going to have weak stats as usual. A Tailwind draw, draw a card. And if it's your first turn, draw three more. God damn. Uh, wait a minute. You can't attack if it's... Okay, if it's your first turn, I guess if you're playing second. Because, yeah. You can't attack on the first turn. Uh, Fletchender, quick attack, uh, looks nice here. And then the Talon Flame, I mean at least it has free retreat for the 140 HP. I would have liked 150, but whatever. I mean they gave that shit to Garchomp at least. Uh, Talon Clutch, turning your opponent's next turn that if any Pokemon cannot retreat, weak. And then Nitro Drive, if this Pokemon has any fire energy attached, it's going to do 160 for 2. Once again, not that impressive. 
and uh, we got uh, the greedent line. Oh, man, I need to take a sip of water, guys. <sighs> God damn. Pick up and eat. Place one Pokemon to from your disco pile to your hand. Um, not bad, I guess. And then this dude. Brazen Tail. All energy attached to your Pokemon in play can't be discarded or returned to your hand or deck. What? All energy attached to your Pokemon in play can't be discarded or returned to your hand or deck by effects on your opponent's item and support cards. Um, can't be discarded by, okay, uh, okay, now I get it, so, uh, immune, your, your, your dudes are immune to crush and hammer, and I guess the supporters that discard your energies, or even return them to the deck, like some of the other energy removal cards we have, um, but they can still move them to other Pokemon, so not bad, so I guess if you really hate crushing hammers and shit, you can use this dude in your deck, but it's a stage one. Good effect, though. I feel like this will see play in some decks that are low maintenance. And you really don't want to uh, lose your energies, like your valuable energy attachments. Good little Pokemon. Okay, now we're down to the trainers. We got the Fog Crystal. Yeah, I knew this was going to do some psychic shit. So what do you do? Search your deck for either a psychic type basic Pokemon or a psychic energy and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your deck. So this is basically a freaking um, mysterious treasure. Was that the name of the card in uh, Forbidden Light? But even better because you don't got to discard an energy. So you can't search like a dragon type. But you can search a psychic basic Pokemon or a basic energy. Insane. Okay, so maybe it's not completely superior, but obviously it's broken as fuck. And you're gonna run it in your psychic decks in four. Like, seriously. Uh, you're gonna get the big guys, and you're also gonna get energies. Too good. Okay, we got the Garden Gloves, too. This is gonna be for grass dudes. Attacks from the Pokemon this card is attached to deal 30 more damage to your opponent's active grass Pokemon. Oh, instead it fucks up grass Pokemon. That's too bad. Like, they don't have enough problems already. <laughs> um, alright. I guess if a fire Pokemon uses this, then you're dying in weakness for sure. Like, even low, low damage fire attacks are going to be trouble. I'm pretty sure that's the effect, right? Deal 30 more damage to opponent's active grass Pokemon, right? Then the Gloves of Justice. What do these do? Attacks from the Pokemon this card is attached to. Deal 30 more damage to your opponent's active darkness Pokemon. Man, there's some fucking noise that's distracting me. What the fuck? Anyway. Uh, they're doing some shit outside, it seems. But anyway, uh... Deal 30 more damage to your opponent's active darkness Pokemon. Okay, so this is going to be hate for darkness Pokemon too. So these are like, I guess, uh, counter glove shits. I don't know if they're going to print more in future sets. But another thing that's going to fuck up Eternatus. I mean, Eternatus wasn't even that bad, to be honest, considering that RC Zacian is worse than it. And they're giving it so much checks, like cards to counter it. Like, Zapdos would have been enough to put that guy in the coffin. This is going to be bad, too. I mean, you attach this to one of your Pokemon, 30 more damage, especially with weakness. It's going to add up. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then the Rabbit Strike Scroll of the Skies. Uh, this to can use the attack on this card... Um, what does the attack do, though? It doesn't say. They didn't translate that shit. So, I don't know what it does. It says 10 for lightning and a colorless. And then a 50 times right here. So, I don't know. I guess it's an attack that can... I mean, improve depending on something. 
needs a lightning and a colorless though. So I don't know what it does. They haven't translated it. But um, who knows what it does. It probably won't be good because these tools usually aren't good. But you never know. I mean, for since it requires lightning, I guess the uh, Zero Aura lightning dude, Rengiki Dex, I guess, could use it. And then we got Caitlyn on her own. Is she going to be respectable for once? Not like the Plasma... I think it was Plasma Blast or Legendary Treasures card. So choose any number of cards from your hand and put them in any order at the bottom of your deck. Then draw that many cards from the top of your deck. So it's the same effect for fuck's sake. And that's not good. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is the same effect, yeah. Like the black and white version they printed. Long ass time ago now. It might have been in Plasma Blast. It might have been in Legendary Treasures. I don't remember. But it just wasn't good. I mean... You have to sacrifice a lot of card advantage to get the same card advantage. And for supporter cards, this isn't what you want to do. You want to draw cards, thin your deck, just plus, not break even most of the time. I mean, with stuff like, uh, I don't know, like Cynthia and shit, sometimes you have no choice. You shuffle the same and then you draw the same. But they also have the potential to give you more a lot of the times if you have a low hand size. This, you gotta sacrifice a lot of shit. And you're always gonna draw the same. So I never liked it. I think it's just too weak. And I don't believe they printed this again. Just such a waste on Caitlyn. Too damn bad. And then Agatha. Gym leader from Gen 1. And what do you do? Uh, move after 3 damage counters from your active Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. So, from your active Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. So, this is like a mini healing and mini inflict damage. Not bad. It's actually not bad. I mean, it kind of... It kind of... Um, is, is a jack of all traits but master of none. If that makes sense, like... It does a little bit of healing, but not the mass healing you want if you're going to be tanking. It inflicts a little bit of damage, which is good. But, I mean, I guess that's okay, you know, doing 30 damage for free. It's almost like a, a Verbank City Hydrotoxic Laser combo. So, like a plus 30 you will get from your attack. Okay, so it, it's a good card. It's a good card. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to see play. Indeed. Uh, yeah, nothing else. It's it's not bad, actually. It's heal 30. Inflict 30. Uh, we got Peonia. I don't know who the fuck is this. I, I think, yeah, from the Sword and Shield games. Something. Choose up to three of your prize cards and put them into your hand. And then choose that same number of prize cards and add them to your prize cards face down. Now, Gladion, even though I never liked the card, did see play in decks. And this is basically a triple Gladion. Now, I don't know if you can get to look. What translation here doesn't really make it uh, accurate. I think it might be random. And I think that should make sense because it's a much bigger number than Gladion. I mean, getting three as opposed to just one. So, for balance, I think this might be random. But we'll see. And then CS Bold. Yeah, who the fuck even remembers these? Uh, uh, Elite 4 from X and Y. It's too bad. With only 4 fucking Pokemon. But this guy, I mean... Yeah, he was kind of cool with the question and shit. Sort of ripping your ass, no matter what you say. <laughs> uh, Right, I remember he was asking, do you think Pokemon battles are an art? And if you say yes, he was like, yeah, that's what's up. And if you say no, he's like, man, what a fucking fool you are. Wrong. You're fucking wrong. But what, what this guy does is heal 60 damage from up to two of your Rapid Strike Pokemon. Okay, so this is perfect. Now I don't need to really... Yeah, I really don't need to use... Um, uh, Melon Lana. I mean, Melon Lana is pretty good, so we might still use it. But this is also very, very good. You heal 60 damage from two of your Rapid Strike Pokemon. 
So it's not that big 120 chunk, but it's searchable with artillery. That's the big thing. This is going to be searchable with that card. And I guess if we do have to Urshifu VMAX and we interchange between them, then you don't have to worry about healing mass damage immediately. So I guess I'll need to build the deck differently, but this could replace the tag call engine in that deck. Very, very good. So more stuff for me. So finally a good Rengeki card here. And I guess my suspicion was right. Uh, they're going to probably do another set that's just going to have single strike cards inside because everything was rapid strike here. Then we got the old cemetery. I wonder if they're going to censor this name in the English card. But whether whenever a player attaches an energy card from the hand to one of their Pokemon, excluding psychic Pokemon, put two damage counters on that Pokemon. So this is, I guess, a Pokemon, a, a stadium to use in your psychic decks to get free damage on all the other Pokemon that's not psychic. So pretty good. I kind of like this sort of background too. It's probably some sort of area from Sword and Shield, I think. Uh, right. Man, I mean, Sword and Shield, they could have been amazing games if they didn't fuck them up. I mean, I'm sure some people like them, but much, much bigger potential. Like from what we thought in the beginning, like when I first saw the first trailer. Okay, and then we got the Spiral Energy. Rengeki Special Energy, this card can only be attached to a Rapid Strike Pokemon. If this card is attached to anything other than that shit, okay, discarded. As long as this card is attached over there, um, provides every type of energy, but only one at a time, and the Pokemon this card is attached to cannot be paralyzed. Pretty good. So, yeah, it's the Rapid Strike guys, they got a lot of support. I'm pretty sure Single Strikes are going to get a lot of shit too. I mean, I think eventually they will surpass the Arceus Zacian deck. I mean, the dude is going to rotate out too eventually. If Cosmic Eclipse rotates out. Um, so yeah, add, uh, it's going to provide any type of energy, and you also have immunity to paralysis, and that's going to be handy. There's no limitations, like you, like the multi-energy, if you have any other special energy, you lose the effect, or damage counter, or any shit, it's just Rengiki special energy, and since it's Rengiki, Octillery can search it, man, Octillery... He's getting bustier and bustier. Uh, that, that didn't come up right. Uh, but he's getting better and better the more cards he can search, of course. So, very good. You should be able to search this as well. Uh, since you can search the other special energy. Indeed. And then we got the lucky energy. So, when attached to a Pokemon, this card provides one colorless energy. Whenever this Pokemon is attached to your active Pokemon, it's damaged by an attack. Even if it dies, you draw one card. So I guess this is kind of better than the draw energy. A draw energy, you attach it, you get to draw. This, they gotta attack you to draw. But then you can keep drawing every turn. I mean, I don't know. I guess I like the immediate effect of draw energy, but this can be something else, I suppose, in the Porygon Z decks. And then... You got this uh, VMAX, I guess, Secret Rare Special Version. Looks like it's going to show us. I can't really tell any difference. Oh, yeah, it, it is kind of different. Uh, sort of um, different background and shit. You got this house, whatever. But either way, this, this was the set, guys. Uh, Jet Black Poltergeist. So, Psychic Pokemon getting a lot of support with a lot of the cards here. Uh, some very good Rengi Key uh, Rapid Strike cards like the CS Bolt and um, what else? Like we, we get CS Bolt, you get the Spiral Energy too, that's pretty good. Um, Pokemon wise, I think there must have been somebody that I forgot. A few things, I mean I guess Metagross is and Zero Aura, maybe you're gonna build the deck like that. A few other regular Pokemon. Probably the strongest Pokemon here is, I mean, yeah, it's the Shadow Rider Calyrex. Oh, what the fuck kind of name is that? 
It's almost like these are Yu-Gi-Oh names or some shit, not Pokemon anymore. And uh, like, w what kind of Pokemon has the name Shadow Rider in its name? Like it's some sort of a dude. I don't know. Anyway, it's like a person. But we get Metagross. I was a bit disappointed by it, but I'll probably still try it because it's Metagross. Bliss V, I kind of like. I mean, if anything, the 250 HP is going to be pretty hot. And pretty good set. I think ultimately, Matchless Fighter might be better, but I don't know. I will probably need to check again. It's a more balanced set, I guess, because it has the um, single strike cards too and other regular shit inside. But this one's pretty good. Some key cards. I saw some stuff that I dig. Agatha is going to be pretty good. Um... What else? The, most of the regular Pokemon are useless. Cresselia, this is a big one too. For Psychic Support. So not bad, not bad. We've got some stuff to look forward to. So I hope you guys enjoyed this set review. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Leave a like. Share this video with your friends. <clears throat> Goddamn. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, Saber over my 4th. Thank you guys for watching. We'll say...